Hey there, I'm Bill and welcome to Project Build, where today we're making this oak beam mantle. I got the boards for this project from my local hardwood store, and they're rough sawn and non-standard dimensions, so I started by rough cutting the boards slightly larger than the final dimensions I need for the beam, so that they'll be easier to manage. And then I made several passes with the planer until each board was 3 quarters of an inch thick. Now that my boards are 3 quarters thick, I set my table saw to 45 degrees, and I ripped a beveled cut down the front edge of the top and bottom pieces. I then flipped the boards around so that the beveled edge was against the fence and ripped the boards at 8 inches, which will be the depth of my mantle. I need to add miter edges to the ends of the boards, so I set the miter saw bevel to 45 degrees, just barely cutting off one end, and then marked it at 68 inches for the width of my mantle, drew a reference line, and cut an opposite bevel on the other end. You'll notice that I've clamped the boards to the saw for all these cuts to ensure that they are as accurate as possible. The board for the front of the beam is very similar to the top and bottom, except it has a mitered edge on both long edges. I need it to be 6 inches wide, but the saw fence measures to the base of the blade, so quick math told me to set the fence to 5 and a quarter inches. And it came out just slightly under 6 inches, which I'm happy with. I cut this front board to length like the top and bottom pieces, except here I left some pieces that are longer than the depth of the beam on the outside of both cuts. And I'll use these extra pieces a little later in the video. I cut four rectangular pieces for the frame of the beam that are equal to the width of the flat side on the inside of the front board and three quarters inch shorter than the length of the flat side of the inside of the top and bottom pieces. I marked the locations for where I wanted the pocket holes on the frame pieces and drilled them using my pocket hole jig. Then I clamped and screwed the frame pieces to the inside of the bottom board of the beam, spacing them evenly across, aligning the end pieces with the edges of the bevel cuts. I laid the top board of the beam with the inside up, set the bottom half on it, aligned the front edge of the frame pieces with the start of the beveled edge, and used a speed square to align the boards end to end. Once aligned, I clamped it in place and screwed the ends together. And there's not much clearance for the holes on the middle pieces, so I used a right angle adapter and a shorter bit to drive these screws in. Hi mom! I cut a bunch of small blocks from the scrap pieces of oak and glued them in line with the beveled edge on both the top and bottom of the beam using brass to secure them while the glue dried. I test fit the front piece to make sure everything lined up before adding glue to the beveled edges and wood blocks and then spread out the glue using a glue brush. I positioned the front board and clamped it using any and all clamps I had. Then I rotated the beam so I could access the back. And don't grab the clamps to move the beam, that, that would be silly. I used the pocket holes I drilled earlier to screw the frame pieces to the front. Then I pre-drilled and added a trim screw through every glue block, being sure to clamp each location while I was driving the screw. I'm making the boards for the ends of the beam from those leftover pieces of the front board from earlier in the video, but currently the bevel is in the wrong direction, so I cut a bevel on the opposite 45. Using the leftover pieces from the front piece allows the grain pattern of the front to wrap around the sides of the beam. I marked along the back of the piece and cut it to length, then with glue on all the beveled edges, I clamped it and added a couple of one and a quarter inch washer head screws through the inside to secure the side piece. I glued and tacked some small wooden blocks to the sides of the frame pieces at the top of the beam to give me something to screw a French cleat to, and I wouldn't need these blocks if I had made the frame pieces from solid wood instead of plywood. With the glue on the beam drying, I took a 3.5 inch strip of plywood and ripped a 45 degree bevel so that the two pieces are roughly the same size. I added glue to the top of the French cleat and the screw blocks, then pre-drilled, countersunk, and added a wood screw at each screw block location to hold on the French cleat. I used the lower half of the cleat to clamp the top half while the glue dried. Before finishing the beam, I wanted to test fit everything, so I measured from the bottom of the beam to the bottom of the French cleat, and then marked this distance up from the top of the fireplace surround at both ends. Then I lined up the bottom of the lower half of the cleat at my marks, tacked it in place, and screwed it to the studs with cabinet screws. I wanted to note that off camera I cut the lower half of the French cleat a few inches shorter than the upper half, so I'd have some flexibility to adjust the beam side to side. I test fit the beam, and nope, it won't go up. The existing bump out above the mantle doesn't allow me to lift the beam high enough to get it over the edge of the wall cleat. So I used a cat's paw and a pry bar to remove the nails holding in the bottom board of the bump out, and with that board off, I have the clearance I need to hang the beam on the cleat. Test fitting allowed me to see that the cleat was hung too high, so I remounted it a little lower off camera. 
To finish the beam, I first sanded all the flat surfaces with 220 grit on my orbital sander, and then used the rounded edge of a screwdriver shaft to round over the seams. Doing this closes the small gaps by forcing the wood fibers of the two board edges together. After this, I hand sanded all the corners to smooth them out and then removed the sanding dust from the beam with an old paintbrush. I applied a coat of stain in the direction of the grain and a few minutes after applying, wiped it down to remove any excess stain. After letting the stain dry overnight, I looked to fix the larger gaps that couldn't be closed using the screwdriver trick. I could have filled these gaps with wood filler before staining, but in my experience, wood filler gets into the grain of the wood and does not stain very well. Instead, I applied a colored match wood filler and while the filler was still wet, wiped off the excess with a damp cloth. I thought this worked really well and will look to do it like this in the future. I applied a coat of wipe on polyurethane to the entire beam. Once dry, I lightly sanded with 320 grit and brushed any dust off before applying another coat of poly. In total, I applied six coats and I'm really happy with how it looks. I glued some small wooden blocks to the ends of the wall cleat and then set the finished beam in place, making sure it hung over each end an equal distance. I drilled small holes on the underside of each end of the beam, then enlarged the hole a little to account for the head of the screw and drove a long trim screw up into the wooden blocks that I added at the ends of the cleat to secure the beam to the wall. I also added a few screws into the studs at the top of the beam to further secure it. And these weren't necessary, but will be covered by the bump out, so I figured why not. And now that the beam is mounted, I put back the lower board of the bump out and screwed it to the studs behind. And we're done making this beam mantle. If you want to make a mantle like this, free plans and all the tools and materials used are linked in the video description. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you won't miss my future videos like making this fireplace surround, which is coming soon. Until next time, go build yourself and make a beam mantle.